Now, Fahana, you were one of the Extinction Rebellion protesters who actually glued yourself to Shell headquarters. Can you just talk about that? Because it's one of the things that had kind of made the headlines, super gluing yourself to uh, an organisation that you're protesting against. But what's quite extraordinary about it is that the police are actually very considerate of you, aren't they, in those circumstances? Um, yes, I was one of 1,100 people arrested. I have to give credit to our police who are very professional and considerate of all of the protests. It was pretty uh, disruptive. Ella, lots of annoyance, wasn't there, in central London about what the protesters did. But you, Fahana, went to meet, then, the Environment Secretary yesterday. Ella, do you think that that was a meeting that should have gone ahead? Um, no, uh, and that's not because I don't think that the right to protest is very important. I've done stunty protests in my time, <laughs> um, some very silly, some very serious. But I think what really we're seeing is a group that has, at its heart, very undemocratic um, kind of viewpoints and undemocratic demands. Extinction Rebellion talks about the fact that this is beyond politics, so it's funny that they want to meet a politician. Mm -hmm. um, if it is beyond politics, they want to declare a climate emergency, which would give the government the kind of the powers to um, bypass due process. It doesn't have the backing of a mass movement in this country, and yet it's advocating for changes in relation to um, cutting net carbon or CO2 emissions, which would have drastic implications mm -hmm. for lots of people in this country. So my, my problem is that, not that... Um, Gove is meeting with them necessarily. I mean, Gove's obsessed with climate change. This is his thing. You guys are on the same side. I mean, it's really not that radical at all. It's the fact that a small group of people who are adamant that they do not want mass support, they have no interest in that, are trying to bring the country to a standstill. That is undemocratic. All right, Farana, here's where I'm confused about the mission of these protests. Um, you were targeting public transport. Yeah. And yet I thought the whole point of... The, the way we tackle climate change as a mass populace was that we move away from petrol-guzzling cars and planes and so oh. on, and we use public transport like trains and so on. Why would you target the, the, the areas and disrupt the one thing that we're supposed to be moving towards as part of our climate change way of tackling it. Sure. Well, let me just um, answer Ella's point, um, because we have got a debate in Parliament. Labour's put forward this motion. That's what the focus of attention is going to be on. And it wasn't that we just met Michael Gove. We also met with the Labour Party. The Scottish uh, Assembly has declared an emergency. So has the Welsh Assembly. It's really, so this frankly, is the English, the, the, you know, England, the UK, mm. that is a bit behind, and it's only the... Right, but as Ella says, this is an overtly behind. political campaign, then, so, right? Absolutely, and it's yeah. uh, two-thirds of the British public support and understand... That is that true, but let me come back to my... Right, let me come back to my... The planet is in an emergency, right. so I, an independent poll... I don't dispute that. Yeah, right. an independent poll we published yesterday yeah. said right. very clearly that two-thirds of the British people yeah. understand that and support the idea I, of an emergency. Right. I do, I do, you're talking yeah. to one, right? I totally agree that we should do more urgently about climate change. What I don't agree with is 10 days of massive disruption of public transport in particular, given that's what we're supposed to be encouraging people to use. Well, the, Can you explain to me the thinking no, behind doing that? Absolutely. The tactics are deliberately disruptive. They are disruptive. But why disrupt the one thing you want people to do? Because we have to use the analogy as a fire alarm. You know, disrupting a lot of people is the equivalent of sounding a very loud fire alarm. But what message and are you sending? The, the message is rather yeah. confusing, isn't it? You know, like saying, not... we must do something about climate change, yeah. you've got to stop using your cars, so your protest forces people to use cars because you're disrupting... No, car use went down. In fact, we're doing uh, and asking for the release of the full air pollution figures and, in fact, the London benefited greatly from the lack yeah, of cars. Yeah, but if you got out of and... your car and got yeah. onto a DLR train and found protesters standing on top of yeah. it, which meant that you couldn't go anywhere, you might be a little bit annoyed that Those you've been were... persuaded to abandon your car, yeah. get onto the environmentally friendly form of transport, and apparently that's wrong too. We, we're not... We, the protests weren't about the mode of transport. They were designed to cause disruption. So even and if I you were doing the right I thing... Saw, I, saw, yeah. I, saw, I saw one stage... I do want to apologise for yeah. the disruption that right. was caused, but the disruption was intended to no, I get sound you. You to be a very loud yeah. fire alarm, and I think it's worked. All right, Frankly, look. we wouldn't be right. here, I wouldn't be at this uh, okay. show, and the politicians wouldn't be seeking, mm. you know, meetings with us well, unless... You can get, you can get on this show by dropping your trousers in Trafalgar Square. So, I mean, let's get things in perspective, We've right? never had that guest on. But we would do if they did it, right? Okay. So here's my point. Here's my point. 
You want people to move with you, right? We know that a lot of people share your concerns about this, right? But for 10 days, you massively disrupt everybody. There were video clips coming out of what looked like a bunch of middle-class people off their heads on wacky-backy, dancing like loons on the bridges, right? What possible message does that send to anybody about the need to urgently tackle climate change? Looks like you're all on one big jolly, having a great old laugh, you're gluing yourself to various, you know, shell buildings. Because all of the things that people have been doing, like me, for the last 30 years, mm. both in my capacity as a, a, a lawyer who's written about climate change, written mm. books, gone on shows, done reports, signed petitions, gone on marches, mm. none of that has got through, which is why these disruptive okay. tactics the, are needed. The important thing there is that you haven't won mass support, and perhaps I'm mm. the one person there on is... this panel that says that I disagree with the idea that yeah. we have to declare a climate emergency and we have to panic like our house is on fire. The way to better our uh, relationship with the planet and to create a better future is to innovate our way out of this. And the problem with the message that Extinction Rebellion is sending out, never mind if they're white guys with dreadlocks and dancing mm. to rave music or having fun or whatever it is, that kind of stereotype. Well, I'm not a white guy no, with dreadlocks. That's the stereotype I'm a lawyer, that Pierce I'm a lawyer was talking about. Two thirds of the that's British the, public understands. That... No, well, but, 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 but don't let her finish. Let me finish her point. <laughs> You don't right. have her point. What yeah. you don't have is public backing. And because mm. your message is saying, you stupid people, you don't get the mm. science. You ridiculous people, we have to get on your train and stop your journey. We have to shout it to you until you listen. Mm. I tell you, that is not how democracy mm. runs. And if you continue to do this and essentially yeah. get into bed with politicians mm. who, are on, who mm. want to pander to this, you will never win mass I support. Think, I think the first time we're seeing a tremendous cross-party collaboration, I would want you to applaud that, actually. But you say this Gove is beyond politics. Mm. You, let, you well, say let you me, only let me want 3.5% of people to engage with this. Does that sound like democracy the, to you? The point is every political leader is reaching out and understanding that they need to cooperate. The bigger the point, public the bigger point, this isn't radical. The bigger the point should be, be that Britain, is a, as you know, is a complete pinprick in this whole issue. And what you should be doing is getting on planes, ironically, to China, <laughs> right, and going and doing this China in the middle of Beijing. China is doing... China is, has got one of the largest uh, solar industries in the world. Yeah. They are greening up. It's also not China, a democracy. China, China is, is not a democracy. up like a giant tortoise greens yeah. up for hibernation. We, 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 you know I'm afraid we have to draw the debate to a close.